Our brother Ni Ayi Hammond will speak to us. Thank you very much. Um, the name is Ni Ayiti. Yes. A lot of people assume Ayi and Ayiti are the same, but they are two different names. Good evening, beloved in Christ. Um, I was going to take the opportunity granted me to speak to you tonight on the Christian and media dangers and benefits for the Adventists. I was going to take advantage of that to speak to you a little bit about Hope Channel, but I'll reserve that for the end. And so let me jump a few slides and come to the topic for tonight. The Christian and media dangers and benefits for the Adventists. You know, when Pastor spoke to me about this topic, I was wondering what Specifically, was he hoping that I could achieve with this topic, Adventism and the media? But you know, because technology is here to stay, older folks worry about how younger generations will use the technology. Additionally, everyone is concerned whether media and technology in general are good or evil or more likely somewhere in between. But the first thing we need to ask ourselves to lead us in this topic is what is media? What is media? Dictionary.com tells us that usually used with a plural verb, 
The means of communication as radio and television, newspaper, magazines, and the internet that reaches or influences people widely. Marketbusinessnews.com says the term media, which is the plural of medium, refers to the communication channels through which we disseminate news, music, movies, education, promotional messages, and other data. It includes physical and online newspapers and magazines, television, radio, billboards, telephone, the internet, fax, amongst others. Wikipedia, uh, World Encyclopedia, if I could put it that way, of the internet, says in mass communication, media are the communication outlets or tools used to store and deliver information or data. The term refers to components of the mass media communication industry, such as print media, publishing, the news media, photography, cinema, broadcasting, that is radio and television, and digital media, and advertising. And so, basically, media or mass media seems to educate, to inform, entertain through news features and analysis in the press. They also produce documentaries, drama, current affairs programs, public service announcements, magazines, radio programs, amongst others, and television. And so let's check some statistics to help us in our discussion today. Basically, we're saying that in February, this data is, is from February 2022. And we are saying that the total population is 32 million thereabouts persons. And we have cellular mobile phone connections, that's 44.9 million, meaning that we have more mobile phones than human beings in Ghana. Now, when we look at device ownerships, we have about 97% of people in the country owning any kind of mobile device. And we have 99.3 having access to smartphones. Now, let us also look at the share of web traffic by this, uh, device. We have about 70.64% who use mobile phones to get onto the internet. As against 28% who use laptops and desktop computers and just about 1% using tablets. This is where it interests me. Daily time spent with media. Now, averagely, time spent using the internet is almost seven hours a day, averagely. And time spent watching, <coughs> pardon me, television broadcast and streaming is just a little over three hours. And so, which means that we spend more time on our phones or tablets than we do watching TV. Now, if we look at the demogra uh, demographic profile of audiences, we see that majority of us within the ages of 18 and 44 are on the internet. Between the ages of 18 and 44, majority of us are on the internet. And 
we look at the most visited websites. If you look at the top 20, what you see is that majority of that is on betting, pornography. Betting, pornography. You don't see anything religious in the top 20. If you go to top YouTube searches, within the same, the survey was done February 2022. Out of the top 20 YouTube searches, you have at least worship songs at number 11. But beyond that, almost everything is about movies, about music, about artists, secular artists, nothing about gospel artists. So we go on to see the main reasons for using social media. And over 40% says keeping in touch with friends and family. 36% says feeling spare time. Another 32% says making new contacts. Now, if you look in the reasons, none of them has to do with searching for Christian content. But the part that excites me is that majority of people are there keeping in touch with friends and family and filling spare time. And so it means that if we make a conscious effort to fill our social media pages with Christian content, we are likely to get over 70% of people who uh, visit the net at least have some information about Christianity about God, about Adventism. But do we really do that? What do we do with our uh, WhatsApp statuses? What do we do with our profile pages? What do we do when we go on Instagram or to Facebook or to Twitter or any of those platforms? Now, types of social media accounts followed. We have over 41% who follow friends, family, and people they know. So it means that if we use it, our friends, our family, people who know us would actually get to get some information about Christ. But then when you follow through, you see that most of the time, what we are looking for are actors, comedians, sports people, sports games, bands, singles, work-related companies, politicians, etc. You don't see out of the list anything about a conscious effort to search for Christian material. And so... As children of God, we must make a conscious effort to share it. Now, what are some of our favorite social media platforms? Majority of us are on WhatsApp. That's about 52, 57.4%, 52.4%. Next is Facebook. Instagram, 
Twitter, Snapchat, and the rest follow. It means that, especially on WhatsApp, if we use it, because the people on WhatsApp are the people we know or we have an interaction with. We are in so many groups. But how many times do we just drop a message? You know, sometimes it may be just for one person. Your whole life, maybe yours is to just win one person. And that would have been that information that you shared on your WhatsApp status. Or that information that you dropped in a WhatsApp group. Because majority of us are on WhatsApp. And so we ask ourselves, what does media do? Media captures human attention and holds fast a collective gaze. What am I saying? A scene is a moment of varying lengths in which the collective gaze is fixed on something specific, an image, an event, or a moment. And it's something that captures human attention. An instant where our eyeballs and brains focus and fixate on something projected at us, and that is what the media is all about. Whether it's true, whether it's false, whether it's fiction, a scene is visible that holds your attention and takes your, 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 your whole gaze into it. What does media do? Media wants something from you. New scenes are now given to us with little or no effort. Usually, what is it? It's just a flick of a finger away. We no longer look for new scenes. Instead, new scenes look for us. Videos that start queuing and playing automatically. And when they run out of time, they go on to the next in queue. Same way we, we extend our Netflix, a lot of us who use Netflix, over indulgence, watching by having the next episode auto start. And so it doesn't require any action from us. We just become vegetables. And we just sit down and it's just flowing and it's flowing and it's flowing. And that is what media takes from us. The effect of this television culture on our attention, choice, empathy, and self of self, uh, sense of self-identity are not well understood by many of us. What does media do? It provides an avenue for advertising which can lead into dangerous habits. The advertising scenes build powerful habits within us and make us endless restless buyers who crave the power of change for our lives and our surroundings just with another trip to the mall. And even this time, it's made it much more easier just by clicking. Do you sometimes look in the mirror and not like what you see? You are not alone in this. And sometimes, your body really hasn't changed. But just your perception has. Why? Because we feel the pressure to measure up to the way fashion, models, etc., look in the pages of magazines. And so you see someone like me, 
a 55-year-old man. Having a little belly is not bad. But because of the constant viewing of actors and, and models on, on, on television and in the movies, etc., so you feel that there is something wrong. I also just need to look like them. The influence that media, messaging, and advertising have on our self-esteem and body images are widely acknowledged as contributory factors to the development of disordered eating. So you say, oh, I want to, I want to be in shape. And so we starve ourselves. Why? Because the media has given us a look, a feel. And so we, we want to look that way. We want to feel that way. And then literal, uh, media literally means knowing that the images of thin young models in magazines, in music videos, on TV, or on the internet promote an unattainable ideal that's false in the first place due to airbrushed and photoshopped body proportions. And so we see, and so even now, we've also learned that. So now when we take pictures, we also photoshop them and airbrush them and put them online. So somebody sees you online, is chatting with you, is making friends with you, then you plan to meet, then you meet and you wonder, are you the same person? As consumers, let's think critically about media images and create healthy standards of beauty and identity that we can live with. Most of us today, are watching these things and looking at celebrities always seem happy and popular and rich in the images. And so we see that as a reference point. And so we also want to look happy and popular and rich on image, uh, social media. In fact, how many people have seen people who portray poverty? Or, or being down, apart from maybe posting a funeral. How many of you see such images? Somebody says, we live in a plastic world. If you want to live in a real world, then that is your situation. But we need to live in a real world and not in a plastic Im uh, world. Said so that being media literate means that we understand that these images don't tell the whole story. In fact, at a point in time, it gives us the, the, the way to think that maybe God, when he was creating me, he, he, he left something out, left something small. So let me go get an artificial eyelash to, to help God shape me well. You know, let, let, me, let me go do... Uh, a bum, a bum extra, just so that I help God because God, God missed some few things. This is what media is doing to us. And it has gone into us so much so that we think that that is the norm. But really, that is not the norm. Media wants to shape our identity. In fact, we lose our sense of self and our place in this world beyond the realm of our pictures, both projected and ingested. We stop appreciating what it is like to inhibit the body that God gave us and formed us from. Our attention span is being exploited by digital media. In fact, smartphones make it possible for the attention economy to target our little attention gaps as we transit between tasks and duties. 
In fact, these days, it, it is so much so that even when you download a Bible or you download a devotional, if you don't take care, by the time you finish reading the first part, an advert is rolling. By the time you finish at one side, an advert is rolling, capturing your attention, bringing it into your space. It is no longer you go and watch TV and watch radio, uh, listen to radio to get advertising, but it is coming down deep to you. And so our attention may be slightly elastic enough to fill up empty gaps of silence in our days, but in the end, it's still a zero-sum game. Because any little time that we have, maybe you're doing some work and you want to go to the um, washroom, you carry your phone. So once you are seated there, you're on your phone. You are in the kitchen cooking. Any five minutes you put a thing so that it seems you're on your phone. We have limited of time to focus on a given day. And now every second of our attention can be targeted and commoditized. This is what media is doing today. In fact, our prayer lives are endangered. Yes, as I said earlier, there are apps and our lights that remind us to pray. May we use them let us remember that spiritual chaos is meant not to serve the soul, but to serve the attention of the merchants. And so once you have this in mind, you know what you do with those apps. Because those apps, if it is not one that is created by the church, for example, like our Sabbath school, or like um, you, you download the aging white Bible, etc. So far as it is the merchant that created it, they will drop the arts in there. So no matter what you do, the arts will follow you wherever you go. The worst of our compulsive social media habits are filling our days and corroding our prayer lives such that, like I said earlier, in that short space of time, maybe some five minutes, that you could have used to pray, you pick your phone and want to check what's happening online. That 10 minutes free time that you have, even you're going for an interview and you are just being, you are in the queue waiting to be called instead of sitting down to pray. You think, oh, I'm whiling away my time. You pick up your phone, you're on the internet. That is what the merchants are doing to us with media. Media can blind to the glory of Christ and decrease your zeal for the Lord. In fact, feeding on sinful media will annul your holy affections. Yes. But pampering yourself also with a glut of morally neutral media also spoils your affectional zeal. You think, oh, this one is morally okay, so, oh, let me go, let me go. But the point is that anything that is morally neutral, as you keep watching, as you keep watching, it makes it a little easier for you to move the next step and to the next step, and to the next step, and before you realize, you've entered the scenes that are immoral. Our shows and movies and games lure us to give ourselves away to the screens, a giving of the self that must be reserved for God alone, an idolatrous giving away of the soul to a media that will never love us back. In fact, Jonathan Edwards says, we humans don't merely have habits. We are the habits. The only hope for sanctification of our habits and love is the spirit. He must awaken his transforming power deep inside us and open our eyes to behold 
the splendor of Christ. But you know what? Your problem is internal, not external. The problem we face is internal, not external. When God put eternity into man's heart, he made the heart a spacious, hungry, and restless thing. Ecclesiastes 3, 11 tells us that. Sinful longings drive the last in all our faculties, not least in our vision. For the eye is not satisfied with seeing. Ecclesiastes 1, 8. Just as hell and the grave engulf and never fill up, so too never satisfied are the eyes of men. Humanity's lustful eyes never stop eating because they are never satisfied. And the merchants know that. And so they play on that whilst we give them that opportunity. Sin within us is the greatest threat. Not the glittering world outside us. Because we try to satisfy the sin within us. And we have that assistance by what is outside us. But if we fill our souls with the power of the spirit through studying the word and staying focused with God, we will be victorious. Beloved, your problem as I said, is eternal and external and you will become what you behold. You don't become like Christ by beholding TV all week. You don't become like Christ by spending your time on social media all week. And you don't become like Christ by beholding the internet all week. You don't become like Christ when you fill your life with things of this world. You become like Christ when you behold the glory of Christ. Amen? And you expose your life moment by moment to his glory. All through God's revelation in scripture. In setting our minds on the spectacle of Christ, we are called to a personal discipline entirely foreign to this world. Even our natural inclinations. Scripture feeds our new appetites for the Savior. Our new appetite directs us towards Christ. No matter or no other factor separates the Christian's appetite from the world's appetite for uh, manufactured spectacle apart from focusing on Christ. You go anywhere today and the view is the same. People sitting quietly, heads bowed, Fingers tapping while playing, texting, or emailing on their phones or tablets. The conversation is virtually unheard. We are not even talking to ourselves any longer. Beloved, the good book says there is time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven and the civil world also says procrastination is the thief of time these sayings speak to us about the nature of time and opportunities that come with it 
Apostle Paul's words in Ephesians 5, 15 to 17 have urged readers to understand the urgency in making spiritual hay while the sun shines. See then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The next verse follows with this directive. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The Bible is never brash or vulgar, but neither is it ever concerned with political correctness or modern sensitivities or touchiness about being judgmental or intolerant or assigning labels to people. Beloved in Christ, this is a wake-up call for all the people of God to be very careful what we do with our time, especially our spiritual life. It is easy to forget that we are on the clock and time is ticking. Every second, time is ticking. It's easy to get trapped in the thinking that life will move forward as it has always been and there's not going to be an end. But a day is coming when life is going to change drastically and when that day comes, we will be out of time to accomplish the real things that matter. For us to make hay while the sun shines, means that we take advantage of the chance to do something with conditions, which conditions are good. Media. Positive or negative. We all must understand it and use it to do the will of God and not allow it to take us away from God. We should not sit around discussing the why, but move on to allow God's work to be displayed in the solution. He says to them, we must do the works of him who sent me. Let's do the same for our Lord and Savior. Beloved, let us rest on the faithfulness and love of God. Thank you. Amen. Pastor, at this time, if you allow me, let me take the opportunity to do what I had wanted to do earlier to use that opportunity to introduce you all to Hope Channel. Now, on behalf of the management and staff of Hope Channel, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for your continued support of the channel. In fact, if it hadn't been for a percentage of your tithes, we will not have been able to do what we do. In fact, getting the channel to where it is in this past four years has been extremely difficult. But while there's much to be done, there's much to praise God for. Because together with the church, we've held evangelistic efforts that have left to the baptism of over
and make that consistent payment. Currently, we even want to go on the digital platform because we realize that when we move out of Accra, the channel is very strong because out of Accra, satellite is very effective. But within Accra, the greater Accra region, where we have over 5.5 million people, we do not have that kind of viewership that we require. And if you even come to the, the, the metropolitan part of Accra, we have about 2.2 million people. And all of them have access to the digital platform, which makes it easy for television viewing for them. And so we miss all these people. Now, what do we do? We need 12,000 cities a month to be on the digital platform. And these contributions would help us achieve that. I want to plead with all of you to take that, that number. That is our mobile money number. That you can send your contributions to that number and it is going to help us a lot. If you've never heard of Hope Channel and this is the first time Oh, sorry. You want to pick the number. Let me leave it down there. If you've never heard of Hope Channel and this is the first time you are hearing of Hope Channel, you can go online to our website, hopetvgh.org, or you can visit our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Hope Channel GH. Please... Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, etc. You will get notifications. Maybe you might not be able to go to your friend to preach the word. But when you get a notifi notification, you can just forward that notification over. Someone's soul can be saved. Our dedicated team at Hope Channel, a small team. Just about 10 of us with one intern is entirely committed to Jesus' purpose of not only preaching the gospel to every creature, but also making disciples of all nations. As a media ministry dedicated to evangelism with a global mission, we are aware of the unique role we play in a prophetic movement. We consider it a privilege to actively engage in Jesus' last day's habits. Since we firmly believe that he is coming back very soon. Together, you and I, we can make an impact for the kingdom of heaven. By giving to support the channel to do its work. Thank you very much for the opportunity granted me. And may God bless us all. Shalom. Sorry. If there are any questions, one or two, three questions that anybody would want to ask, we'll see if we can. Okay, I don't see any. Station in order to raise money. Uh, why, why don't you run adverts on the TV to make money? And then, number two, your staff only one lady, and this is gender dominated women church. Why? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have set commercials, however, it is not all commercials that we can earn. You know, beyond the alcoholic and other beverages that we cannot air, the church has a policy on advertising. And the church does not agree to make believe. And so, it is not all advertising that we can take. Now, when I say make believe, you know, sometimes you see an advert... Um, let's say maybe 
rush, energy drink, or maybe vital milk, and the person drinks vital milk, and there's, there's a car going to knock somebody, and you see him just, whew, and carry the person away. It is make-believe. Because you are making people think that when they drink this, they can have that kind of energy to do that kind of thing. And so for an advert like that, even though the product will be acceptable to advertise, the content of the advertising material, we cannot air. But beyond that, we advertise. In fact, we've been calling for advertisements. But I believe that at least for now, we've started a few um, Adventist businesses are coming. We believe that more will be coming as, as we grow and as people get used to the channel and as we are able to also have a little bit more resources so that we can do a, 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 a survey, um, getting an independent survey company to help us do a survey to able to identify our reach and our, our numbers, etc. Because the advertisers, they go with numbers. With church business, we can go with sentiment because we want to support our own to grow. But with the, those who are not mem <coughs> members of the church, they look at the bottom line, numbers. How many people are you reaching? Where are you reaching? Who are you reaching? Amongst other things. So, in terms of the... We want to employ. In fact, we have been willing and hoping and wishing to employ more because the workload is tiring on this staff. But we cannot employ when we do not have the basis of employment, which is finance. You get me? And so we are limited, even though we know, because as a TV station running 24 hours, the minimum number of staff that you need is about 30 minimum. That, you, that means that you're on the lowest. You're running a 24-hour channel. As we stand right now as a TV station, we don't have a copywriter. We don't have a news editor. We don't have a professional TV director. We don't have producers. But this team of 10, made up of graphics persons, made up of editors, made up of technical people, including myself, have to double to do everything because we believe we have been called for a purpose. But if we cannot support the channel, trust me, trust me, on Christian television today, there is no channel that produces the content that we produce. Even GTV, even TV3, with all their staffing, trust me, do not have about 25 independently produced programs by them on their channel weekly. A lot of the content there is third party content or content that they've purchased, all those telenovelas and all that are purchased content, but produce content from themselves. We produce more content than them. And so there's, there's stress on the staff, but if we stop, what we've started will be stagnant. And so we cannot stop, but we can only plead that we can get more support such that we can be able to employ more, to do more for the kingdom. There is no, I can stand and boast, there is no Christian television that produces the kind of content we do on health, on relationships, on law, on, on business. It, it is endless. We produce rich and quality content based on Adventist message and direction. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ayuti. I hope I'm correct <laughs> for a wonderful lecture.
Standing outside because the kids have taken the seats. If you're a parent here and you can let your child sit on your laps, respectfully, let get that done so that the adults can take some of the seat, please. Uh, I wanted to ask if you have a certain like or idea or or a goal that you set for let's say your income at the end of the year. Do you have like a certain amount of money that you hopefully want to reach by the end of the year? Okay, thank you. You have a follow-up question to that? Okay, we, we always have a budget. You know, like any other business, at the beginning of the year, you work with a budget. You get me? And so, yes, we have a budget that we're looking at. You know, for example, um, this year, we had a budget of about close to 2.5 million uh, Ghana cities for the year. Unfortunately, you know, you always hope and aim, but it also depends on the challenges of income. You get me? Because our key source of funding is the 1% tied from the north, the 2% tied from the south, funds that we get from Hope Club 1000. You know, last, last year is when we launched Hope Club 1000, and we launched it for one year. You know, last year, averagely, we were getting, we had about, should I say 200? There are about persons. We didn't hit the 1,000. And so we were making, averagely, 20,000 cities a month. Unfortunately, this year, because we said it was a, a year, and we relaunched it this year, but the response has rather gone down. So, for example, this year, we are making averagely around 12,000 cities a, 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 a month. Now, that has dipped into our projected revenue. For example, we, have, we had a revenue projected, for example, offerings. You understand me? And when we look at the offerings that we've received so far, for example, from all in the Southern Ghana Union, is even up to 50,000 cities. Meanwhile, we projected an offering of about 150,000 cities. So as much as we have that budget, meeting that budget is also a challenge, but we're still working towards it. You go ahead. So it's so you still do like different pitches and all sort of go fund me things because your idea is something that I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be interested in. Come again. I said so. Do you do um uh, go certain fund me. yeah so and different like pitches out to people? Yeah, we do different pitches out to people. But for now, we are not doing GoFundMe. For now, we are not doing GoFundMe because it takes, there are always, you know, every, everything and what you can do and what you cannot do at any given time. So for now, we are not doing GoFundMe, but we are doing pitches to individuals. In fact, we'll be, um, we'll be having donor conferences pretty shortly to still sell the station to potential donors with projects and activities that we want to do. Yeah. Thank you. So to close our session, let's please rise up and make use of hymn number 108, only the first stanza.
like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for an opportunity to be before you this day. We thank you for the message that you gave us this evening. Speak to us. Teach us. Direct us. And let us make good use of the time that you've given us. So at the end of the day, we will give glory and honor to your name. And say, if it hasn't been God on our side, how will we have survived? Grant us wisdom, grant us knowledge, grant us understanding, and Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. As we move into the next phase of programming today, may your grace continue to be with us, even now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We'll continue with the second stanza as the children ministries leaders prepare to come and take over. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. Our boss, please can you wave at us? Thank you very much. We want to begin this program with the use of hymn number 190. Jesus loves me, this I know. Shall we rise? Yes, Jesus. 
Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us this day. As we have come to perform a program this night, we pray you be with us. Be with our speaker, be with all of us. And fill this place with your spirit and your presence. We want to ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Right, today we are here with our children and because they are sleeping, we want to uh, wake them up small, you know. So, we are going to make melody in our hearts. And we are making melody with all of us. So, please, let's stand and sing our favorite chorus. Making melody in my heart. It's, it's an action song, so please, flow with us. Let's stand. All right, children. Making melodies in my heart. Making, just do like this. Uh huh. Making melodies in my heart to the king of. Thumbs up. Making melodies in my heart. Making melodies in my heart. Making melodies in my heart to the king of. Thumbs up, elbows up, make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart to the king of thumbs up, elbows up, knees bent, make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart to the king. Thumbs up, elbows up. Knees bent, let's in. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart to the king of. Thumbs up, elbows up, knees bent, legs in, heads up. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart to the king of. Thumbs up, elbows up, knees bent, legs in, heads up, hands down. Making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart to the king of. Thumbs up, elbows up, knees bent, legs in, heads up, hands down, tongue out. La 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 la, la la, la la, la la, la la la, la la, la la. Now, it is well. Let's stand. Let's stand. You have been seated for a long time. Let's stand. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well. Every 
everybody give me a J. Let's go now. Give me J and E. E and S. Give me and then you. Good evening. It is truly well with our soul. Amen. Amen. Today our scripture reading will be taken from Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Um, I would like us all to take our Bibles. And please if you are there, can we shout a big amen? amen. Okay. And I read... Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Amen. Hello, children. Hello, Can you please give me a wave? I want every child here to give me a wave. Good, 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 good. Thank you very much. Good evening, church. We are very grateful as a department that the leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ghana remembered the children this year in, when planning for the camp meeting. This is the first time ever we are having children's hour as part of our annual camp meetings. And we are very grateful to the church. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this evening. May your spirit be present with us and bless us even as we learn about our children and this ministry that you've blessed us to, to bless us with. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. children that God himself has blessed the church with. And the department has as its mission, nurturing children into a loving, saving relationship with Christ. If I'm to go by uh, Pastor Nimaku's uh, message this morning, it's all about discipling children. Discipling children, if I'm to go by that. Yes, and this department is aimed at helping raise these children to know Christ, to experience the grace that Christ himself has bestowed upon us. Children to know that God loves them. And this is reflected in the way that we relate to them as adults, that we relate to them as parents, that we relate to them as a church. Christ, as we see, loves us so much. And he does everything in his power to save us. As a church, is that how we treat our children? Or are they always an afterthought to us as a church? Uh, Pastor Brew, let me use what happened this evening as an example. I was at the back getting ready for this program. When Pastor Brew came to me, uh, we are hard pressed for time. Can you please keep the children's are. I was like, Pastor, 
uh, th this can't happen. I'm, I'm very sorry. You know, when someone or a department has to be sacrificed, especially when it pertains to time, you mostly realize it's the children. We shouldn't be. Christ gives us all for us. Christ makes time for us. And even Christ tells us that if we are to make it into heaven, we are to become like these little ones. Church, how do we treat our children? Do we treat them the way Christ treats us? Or they are always an afterthought to us as a church? Do we go the extra mile to make sure that our children are comfortable? Thankfully, when we presented our camp meeting budget for the year, we are very grateful. The district executive gratefully uh, gave us the amount of money uh, we requested for. Although uh, depreciation and inflation has eaten part of it because the budget was prepared some months ago, we are very grateful. They didn't take out a penny because they saw the importance of the department in the district. Pastor and district executives, we say thank you and we pray that this kind of thing continues, not just as a district, but in our, in our local churches. The Children's Ministries Department is also an all-inclusive department or ministry. We do not discriminate according to your race, your gender, your color, or whatever. We embrace everyone because Christ embraced everyone whilst he was on earth. Sinful though we may be, we do not shun each other because we are also sinful and Christ doesn't shun us. But we try to hold each other's hand to make it into heaven. So it's an all-inclusive ministry. And this ministry is also a leadership-oriented ministry. Uh, the General Conference recently has come up with some training curriculum which our leaders and teachers have to go through to equip them to know what the ministry is about. It is not just a department. It is a ministry, a ministry in itself, a ministry discipling people to heaven. So it's, it's nothing that can be taken lightly. So it's, it also has this leadership courses that our teachers undergo to equip them to be able to manage affairs of the department well. It is also a service-oriented ministry. We give our children the opportunity to serve. We give our children the opportunity to know how it is to be of service to others because Christ served us whilst here on earth. It is also a cooperative ministry. It's not a standalone ministry. We partner with the Sabbath school department, family ministries, women's ministries, uh, several of them to help shape these persons to be the kind of leaders Christ would like us have in the church. It is also a safe ministry. It is not just anyone who is allowed to handle these, these children. That is why we carefully take our time in choosing people who help in this ministry. Even if the person volunteers, it is not something that we just swallow in or we just accept you because you volunteered. Because we are dealing with children. And this, in this age in which we find ourselves, our children are very, very vulnerable. Our children are very vulnerable. So we want to create a safe environment where our children can be nurtured. Our department is also an evangelistic ministry. An evangelistic ministry whereby children's faith are developed right from childhood. Can we imagine what would become of our church if all babies dedicated in our church or born into our church, we have about 95% of them growing in faith and remaining in the church till they die. Can we just imagine? Yes, some might fall off, but if we have a majority of them staying in the church, I think it would be a very good evangelistic drive what use will it be if the children born into the church are not nurtured well and they fall off and we spend millions and millions of cities in evangelistic campaigns to bring those outside in? Those that were given to us, how well have we and are we taking care of them to ensure that they make it into heaven? And then let us, let us all note, let us all note that just as Christ said, if anyone offends any of these little children, or because of you, one of these little children's feet stumbles or is misled, 
you yourself shouldn't expect to make it into the kingdom. And as parents and guardians and as a church, these children are put in our custody to help nurture them to make it into heaven. And more especially as parents, we should know that we will give account of each and every one of these children God has entrusted to our care. If perchance by our actions or our attitude, any of these children is misled, irrespective of who you are, irrespective of uh, uh, how many other souls you win into the kingdom, if by your own doing, your child or any child who is directly entrusted into your care misses out of heaven, my brother, my sister, don't expect to be there. You could have won millions of other persons into the kingdom, but if the ones entrusted to your care are not able to make it by your works, please, don't, don't expect to make it into the kingdom yourself. Uh, our children have very short attention span. We wouldn't like to bore them. Because of that, we also don't like talking a lot. Our speeches are quite short and simple. So it's our prayer that together as a church, our times are very challenging and difficult. And it is only the grace of God. We need to cooperate with God to raise these children into the people God himself, want, himself wants them to be. So it's our prayer that each and every one of us would cooperate with God to raise these little ones into what he himself wants them to be. That when he comes, we're able to give a good account of these little ones as a church. So that through your action as a board member or uh, uh, as whoever, things that need to be provided will be provided to nurture these children. As a parent, you perform your duties and responsibilities well so that when Christ comes, we will have a part in the kingdom. Thank you so much. Our work is not very, very easy. We are beset with so many, many challenges. But we do not give up because we love the children. Christ says, even before we make it into heaven, we have to become like them. So we love mingling with them. We love singing with them. We love dancing with them. We love having good fun with them. It's a pleasure for us to work in this ministry, to cooperate with you as parents, to raise these little ones into persons who are fit for life here and also who are fit for the kingdom. May God bless us all as we cooperate to help achieve this goal. Amen. Thank you very much. We want to end with the use of hymn number 652, Love at Home.
shall we reverently bow and pray. We are praying, please. Our dear God and Father in heaven, glory be unto your holy name. We praise you, O God, and magnify your holy name because you are a faithful God. We thank you so much for the love that you have shown to us. We thank you for the lives of these precious children that are standing before your presence. Our Lord and our God, you have made them very special, and we thank you for their lives. We pray, therefore, and commit them into your hands, O oh God, that your hands will always hover around them, O oh God. We are praying, dear Lord, that these children will grow in knowing you and fearing you and serving you and living for you. Amen. We are praying, O oh God, that they will be filled with your Holy Spirit right from their childhood, O oh God. We are pleading, Father, that the training that they have been given they will imbibe them, and that by your grace, they will live in accordance with your will. Our Father and our God, we know that we live in challenging times, but we know also that when we commit our children into your hands, you will treat them in a very special way, and that your grace will abound on them. Father, therefore, we commit all these children into your hands. Lord, may you Give them a future. Amen. We are praying, O oh God, that each one of them will meet your expectation. Amen. And that the plan you have for each one of them will be realized in due course. Amen. Our Father and our God, let none of them wander away. Amen. We are praying, O oh God, that they will seek after you. Amen. That they will commit themselves to praying and reading your word. Amen. Even from their childhood, may they know you, O oh God. And we pray that you open their minds and uh, uh, give them understanding as they study the scriptures. Amen. Our Lord and our God, may they be fortified by the truth Amen. that by your grace, wherever they go, wherever they stand, they will be able to lift you up. Amen. Our Father, make these children different. Make them unique. Make them Christ-like. We are pleading, oh God, that these children will be your children. Our Father and our God, we ask that you bless them in a very special way. Those who are in school, may you grant them wisdom and, and understanding. Grant them retentive memories that they will excel in their studies. Father, give them knowledge. We are pleading that they will not learn only things about the world, but they will also know you as their Lord and Savior. Oh, Father in heaven, we pray that they will grow in favor with God and with man. That in everything that they do, Lord, you be praised and it will please you. So, Father, if any one of them is not well, we ask that you heal the person. Amen. If any one of them is struggling with his or her studies, we are asking, oh God, give them that mind, Amen. that ability and skill that will help them to excel. Amen. Our Father... Bless them and endow them with all that they need so that they will be your children before the entire world. Let them be unique. Let them be models for other young people. We thank you. We thank you for their lives. And we as parents, oh God, help us that we will love them as you want us to love them. And that as you have loved us, may we love them equally. Our Father, help us to meet their needs tonight. We leave all these children in your hands. Lord, bless them. Bless them and make them candidates of your kingdom. May their names remain in your book. In the Lamb's book of life, may we find their names. Now and forever, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Father, we also want to commit all those who have been training them into your hands. Bless them. As they sacrifice, may you reward them accordingly. We thank you for this time. Bless your people, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.
hymn number 540 as we take the next section. Gent